What's up guys, so I'm in Rhode Island. I did something a little impulsive. Let me give you a little backstory on this. So there's been this catamaran that's been online that's, it's an oldie, it's a fixer upper, but I've always thought to myself like that'd be a pretty good catamaran for Randy and I. And it's just, it's been on the market for a while now and the seller's very motivated and the price has just been going down and down and down. And it's finally to the point where I'm like, hey, I think we can actually consider buying this and I should go take a look. So I booked a cheap flight, I booked a cheap rental car. I had to do it during the week because that was when the cheapest flights were. Randy's not here because again, paying for one ticket is cheaper than paying for two. So I'm just here for today and tomorrow. I'm flying back and I'm just gonna be taking a look at this boat. Basically just getting as many pictures and videos as I possibly can, obviously filming a vlog about it and Randy and I are gonna have to make a decision. But anyway, without further ado, I'm meeting the broker there in like 20 minutes, so I've gotta get going. Let's go take a look. All right guys, I'm at the boat. It's actually right above me right now and I got a brief look and I hate to say it, but the boat is interesting. <laughs> it's a really crappy day today, so I've got to film with the GoPro. It's kind of missing but this boat is really cool. Let me show you the underside. It's a spaceship. So before we go aboard, I have to mention that this boat used to be an Uchimer 40. That's how it was originally built. And these sugar scoops, these three extra feet were added to it down the line. So now it's an Uchimer 43 because of these extra scoops. But the issue is these are plywood cord the normal hull, so right here, none of this is plywood cord. This should be solid fiberglass, especially below the waterline. But these added on scoops are plywood cord and they're just, they're rotted out. You can see they just, they completely need to be recorded. So that's an issue right off the bat. It's also on both sides. I mean, you can see right here, water intrusion there and they're just flexible all right going aboard this is the steering mechanism here which is <laughs> look at this so it's a tiller boat look you can see the tiller going back and forth it's got twin tillers twin rudders it's a very simple steering mechanism I like simple you got some storage back here not a crazy amount, but it's there. Dyneema lifelines. There's your port tiller right there. This right here is your cockpit. It's uncovered right now. So a real good thing about this boat is the entire rig is brand new. So the mast, the boom, the standing rigging, I believe even the cross beam up there, all that's brand new as well. So let's go forward. This is the companionway that goes down into the port hall. We're not gonna go there yet. You've got a hatch that goes down into the port hall. You've got your brand new rigging. Lots of water in there, rainwater. Big old chain plate right there. Door aid. Solar vent, that looks newer. You've got your port side dagger board right here. Walking forward still. This is gonna be your port sail locker. So I'm down in the port side bow locker or sail locker and that's that's all filled with foam right there. So that's kind of cool. Got some flotation. This is a nice, nice size locker. And then behind me to aft, look at this guys. You've got even more room. I mean, it's just, this is huge and it's on both sides. So you can tell the, the fiberglass here is, it's all solid fiberglass. You have these kind of like structural members. This is lightweight construction, so I'm not as familiar with the way these are designed and built, but 
This is a new Tremere. The thing I'd be worried about up here is the decks. So I believe these are balsa cord decks. At least that's what the broker said. And they've got a little bit of spring to them, I think. This area seems solid. This is like very structural right here, but over here, the deck in some area has a little bounce to it, but I don't really know what to think of it because I've noticed walking aboard them that even the brand new Uchimers have a little bounce to their decks as well. I mean, it's lightweight construction, so I don't know whether it's good or not. I'd have to definitely get a surveyor out here that knows Uchimers. All right, so I think it's safe to say that this crossbeam is it's brand new as well. It looks beautiful. And the trampoline, it's okay for now. I think I'd want to replace it. We've got a brand new bow roller, a newer anchor. Looks like a new windlass too. There's your other bow locker. I'm gonna go down in there right now. Yeah, this bow locker is just moldy. Wow. Oh man, I feel gross being in here. Ugh. There's foam there again. That looks rotted though. Oh man. Whew. All right, so I never want to go in there again. <laughs> no, that wasn't, I mean, a good cleaning and that will look better, but still, that's, that's a lot of mold down there. So walking up on the mast, got that hatch open. This is the coach roof right here. Now the coach roof is gonna need some work for sure. But the mast is really nice. The stack pack's brand new. Sails are supposedly brand new. I mean, it's crazy because you look at this and you're like, you're looking at a new boat. And then you look at this and you're like, yeesh. Especially when you look at that, you're like, yeesh. I'm gonna walk back this way. So we're on the starboard side. We've got the other dagger board there. That looks like it was a derade. There's your hatch. The hatches look good. All the hatches look really nice. I'm assuming this is the jib track. Two more winches on this side. The winches are nice. And we're back to this helm position. This is where your throttle controls are, your engine controls. Now, I don't know if you guys can see that from here, but those look pretty dang nice, don't they? You know why? Because the engines are brand new and you're gonna see those in a little bit. So I'm gonna walk back here. I'll tell you what, walking back here during a storm or during some rough weather on, on passage is not gonna be fun. We <sighs> got, yeah, another compartment. So that's just a standard compartment. Check out these davits. This is the main sheet here. It's not really a sheet right now. It's mainly just a boom holder. These dinghy davits feel solid. That's a good thing. So I want to look at the coach roof right here because you can see, you can see right there, there's water intrusion. So that's not good. So this coach roof is going to need a lot of work. Possible recoring, lots of cutting, fiberglassing, sanding. There's evidence of that over here as well. So given that there's symmetrical evidence of damage like that, I wonder what that means. All right guys, I'm in the cockpit now and I just kind of wanted to give you an idea of the scale of it. It's very narrow this way, but it's, it goes the whole width of the boat. It doesn't have any type of shade right now, which should be added to it. These kind of seats right here are just glassed right into the boat. Storage can kind of be put under there if you wanted to do some more glassing. You got your winch here. I imagine this is a, that's for your main sheet. On each side you have two big self-tailing winches. Looks like you have Raymarine instruments, wind instruments. I do not see an autopilot. I imagine you could just put a tiller pallet on this boat. So there's some storage down there. It's so cool. All right, enough of that. Let's go inside, I'm getting drenched. 
as soon as you walk in, immediately to port, you have kind of, this is going to be like your galley area. You have a sink there. You could probably put an induction cooktop there. You know, you've got cabinet space. You could put fridges or something, you know, whatever. Here is like a settee area. And I guess you could put a table like right there or something like a table this way. I mean, there's not much room in here. It's very, very small, but you've got a good amount of storage all around, which is kind of cool. And then right here is your nav station. And this is your head on the boat. I think this is the only head on the boat. And they put in a composting head and it's right up here in the salon. So it's, it's kind of weird. Oh, and yeah, look at that. All right, yeah, that's plywood and it's wet, wet, wet. If this coach roof is plywood, I would imagine the decks are plywood unless the coach roof was put on after the fact. I don't know. I mean, if the decks were balsa, it'd be better. But if they're plywood, it could possibly mean that the entire, you know, all the decks need to be recorded. All right, so there's the head. I would rip all this out and just either make a bigger nav station or put a fridge or something there. I believe this is a 30 gallon water tank. You can fill it right there. And then your sink and that's that's it, really. What more do you need, guys? As you may have already guessed, this is not a normal catamaran. So in most catamarans, you go down into the holes from the salon area where I am right now. In this catamaran, you do it from the cockpit. Let's go down into the port hull. We've got to go down through this companionway. Looking directly aft, you have storage. And then you've got right here your 15 horsepower Yanmar diesel, and there's two of these on this boat. So let's stand up. We'll pivot. There's the companion way. There's forward. Here's a couple port lights. You've got this kind of, I guess this could be like a hang locker. This could be closed storage. But right now it's just kind of nothing. It's not doing anything. And forward to that, you've got, this is where the head is supposed to go, except there's a big diesel tank right there. So yeah, there's supposed to be a head here. So there's that, or it could be a hanging locker or something like that. Then you have a pretty big actually double berth right here. So opening hatch right there. So I am looking into the cockpit from the port hull and we need to go to the starboard hull. So let's do it. Going down. All right, so this is basically a mirror image of what is over there in the port hall. So you got your other EMR 15 right there, brand new. Storage, cockpit, storage, I guess, that, that's potential storage in the future. And you've got your double berth right there, opening hatch and what's supposed to be a head, but is actually a diesel tank. So that is such a bad use of space right now. It's like, what are you gonna do with it? I mean, I guess maybe you can put a shelf over that and then that could be a hanging locker instead, but then where would you put the head? Yeah, there's definitely more plywood than I would like on this boat right now, because you can tell that's plywood too. This is plywood. This is gonna be a major structural area right there. So, It seems like the major structural areas are solid fiberglass. But yeah, this, this should be a head right here. That, this would be a perfect little head, but. I just want to get a good look at the exterior of the hulls. I mean, I think the hulls, I 
I think the hulls are really good. And they're not cored like the new ones, actually. These hulls on these older Uchimers, they're solid fiberglass. All right, guys, so obviously I made it back to Florida, and I'm here with Randy, and I've showed her all of the footage from this boat. <laughs> so now that you've seen everything, what do you think? I can't say that I'd commit to this one. <laughs> <laughs> it's a gentle uh, way to put it. Yes. So Jordan and I have obviously talked on the channel before about how we want to ultimately end up with a catamaran and we've talked a lot about possibly building a catamaran of our own. However, something we've gone back and forth about is would it be easier to build one ourselves or to start with one that exists but needs a lot of or like an extensive refit like this boat mm -hmm. does. So I know why Jordan's been keeping his eye on this one and watching it and since the price kept dropping he finally couldn't resist anymore and wanted to go see it. But that being said, I can't even begin to imagine how long it would take for us to refit this boat. I mean, there's so much work to be done. And I mean, the cleaning alone, like I don't think I would ever be comfortable going in that forward locker after seeing how much mold was in there no matter how much we scrub and paint and scrub some more <laughs> okay. i just can't <laughs> yeah. um also something that i point out on a lot of our tours walking the deck on this boat just doesn't seem safe to me there's the area where the dagger boards go up and down I was noticing as Jordan walked past it how wide that was and your foot is very easily slid into that yeah. and not intentionally you could end up breaking a leg or something like mm -hmm. that. Or even when you walked back around towards the cockpit it was such an abrupt drop into the cockpit that again like you stumble into that area and you've got a broken leg or when you went off to the sugar scoop yep. and you commented on how you wouldn't want to be there during a storm there's no lifelines that's an easy man overboard situation so just a lot of red flags as i'm sitting there watching the video i'm just like i can't <laughs> yeah. and some of that stuff you can kind of help fix but some of some of it yeah. you really can't it's yeah i mean if designed. you want functional dagger boards there's nothing you can do to close up that area and still have a functioning dagger yeah. board. And you might be able to close it up a little, but then like you risk... A stretchy net over it. I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's very strange. It, the, the the newer boats with dagger boards all have a, a, a hole that basically fits the dagger board so, almost so tightly that there's no way you mm -hmm. can slip into there. Definitely just things that stuck out in my mind. Like, not to say that there's nothing good about this boat. I mean trying to think of some oh the new <laughs> all of the new um rigging is definitely a boat like a the new stuff is yeah the, that's the advantage it has a new mass new rigging new engines new sails yeah. that's amazing but everything else is kind of i think part of the issue is this would be a huge project and in order to be able to take on a project this big i think you really need to be set up for it and we're just not really set up for it right now. I think the only way a boat like this would make sense for someone is if they already had a piece of property they can put it on, that they own, that they can work on it at their leisure when they're not paying marina or boatyard fees. So since we don't have that right now, it doesn't really make sense for us to take on this massive project. Having a setup like that would definitely be beneficial for someone who would be willing to take on this project and it has to be someone who really wants a big project and has a lot of problem solving skills. We both were talking about how the layout of this boat as it currently is just doesn't really make sense. You really, you talked about completely taking out that salon area and yep. redoing it since you have to record the top anyway take that time to rethink how that's laid out probably take the head out of there and find a way to make the heads in the holes work yeah because the way they're laid out right now it's really difficult to fit the head the fuel tank the engine yeah. with where the companion way comes down so with this boat there's two major problems to the living areas in the hulls and the thing is the hulls are similar in size to the newer Uchermeres, but 
The biggest issue is design. So the companion ways are too far aft, so they end up creating a lot of wasted space. And the fact that the interior living area of the hulls is stopped short. It's basically stopped right about midships because there is a giant structural bulkhead that you cannot take out. And it just makes the, the living area in the hulls very small and very awkward, you know, yeah, it limits your layout possibilities <laughs> yeah. immensely. So Exactly. And it gives you a giant forward locker yeah. in each hull, but it's like that's almost wasted living yeah, space. It's, so it's definitely wasted living space. And in catch twenty two you got an amazing locker, but you've limited your yeah. living space tremendously. You can store as much as you want, except you can't because you don't want to load the boat down that much. <laughs> so I don't think there really is anything you can do to make more living space. No, you've gotta be someone who can problem solve and maximize the living space you have if yeah. you're gonna take on this project. So all that being said, let's say we had a piece of property and we wanted to take on this project, I think I would offer about forty thousand dollars because I think that this boat is probably about a hundred to maybe a hundred and twenty thousand dollar boat if it were completely refit and ready to go so that leaves you about I don't know forty to eighty thousand give or take in the refit after you've put the forty thousand dollars down for you know what you have here because if you estimate it's going to take 40 it's really going to take 80. exactly anyway. <laughs> so i think by the time you got done with the diy refit you put all this money into it i think it would basically be worth right about what you put into it so if you ever wanted to sell it you can basically get your money back and you won't be in the negative which is always a good thing always a good thing especially with boats <laughs> so if you watch this tour and maybe you have the means to refit this boat and you see a diamond in the rough the information for Derek the broker for this boat is going to be in the description below the asking price of this boat will also be in the video description a lot of you have been asking why we don't put that in the video and that's because we can't edit what we've said in the video but if the asking price changes we can change it in the video description so if it isn't obvious we're probably not going to buy this boat <laughs> But you already know what we would offer if we were, and I would encourage you guys, if you really want this boat, to offer whatever you think is fair because the seller is definitely motivated. As always, guys, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a like and a comment down below. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button to follow along with our journey. And if you want to know each and every time we upload a video, go ahead and hit that notification bell. See you guys. Bye. I've got it right and I've got it wrong, but I learned my lesson. Come sit here with me by the fire and let it go for a little.